Good morning, you guys. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to day five of 31 days of the art of engaging the word exegetically in an expository fashion, in an expository everyday fashion. Welcome. Welcome. And today our subject matter is tools. What are the tools that we need to use to address this task? Number one, there's some kind of book that Hayden Robertson calls um, a grammar. And it is where we can look at the grammar and syntax of words together. So there, that is a book, and that book is available on Amazon for around $20. Number two, which I don't have any of, are commentaries. I do not have any commentaries. So that is another tool. Number three, a Bible dictionary, a Bible dictionary such as this one, a Bible dictionary such as this one. This one is based on the NIV, so a Bible dictionary that is related to the Bible that you are using for your essay or message, or sermon, or sermonette, a Bible di dictionary. Okay, and then number four, a lexicon, and those, most of those are digital these days, and you can use them on your phone, and you can use them on your computer, but I like to have the the thing in the I like to have the book I, I prefer the book to the computer because I might need it one day when my computer's not working or the internet's down and so I like the idea of having something written that I can hold in my hand almost dropped it so Bible dictionary, a grammar, a lexicon, a concordance. Many of our Bibles have concordances in the back, so you can use that as well. And many of our Bibles have commentaries in the Bible as well. So most study Bibles have commentary in them. So there's that, and then um, what else? And I'm saying I'm a lot today, I'm not really sure why. <clears throat> One of my favorite Bibles is this Complete Jewish Study Bible. I really like this Bible because it has a lot of, a lot of explanations for Hebrew and Greek words within this text. And it is nice to have that on hand when we need it. So this complete Jewish study Bible is something that I have enjoyed having access to these last couple of years. The number one thing, the number one thing that we absolutely have to have is a Bible, a Bible. Currently, I am using the NASB version of the text, and I have multiple versions of the ESV. The one Bible I did not have was the NASB, and I purchased this Bible for myself in 2022 on 215 and 22. I purchased this Bible for myself. I usually buy my bi myself a new Bible for every birthday. So when I have a birthday, I usually buy myself a new Bible. And if I don't buy myself a new Bible for that birthday, then there might be a day that I just go out, out and make up the difference in a Bible. Like say if I hadn't bought a new Bible for 10 years, I might just go out one day and buy 10. Okay. Bye. So those are some of the tools that we have available to us to help us in the process 
of our task of writing, of manuscripting, of creating a manuscript prior to, to talking about anything. We have to have words written prior to sharing or talking or preaching or theorizing. We need to have words. So lexicons, concordances, grammars, word study books, Bible dictionaries and encyclopedias, commentaries, which I do not have. So I'm going to have to get some of those. And it's helpful for us these days to have the internet so we can use my favorite resource is Blue Letter Bible. Blue Letter Bible. So that is my favorite resource. So these are some... Oh, and... Hayden, Hayden gives us definitions of all that we have just talked about. So, Bible dictionaries and encyclopedias contain articles on a wide variety of biblical subject matter. Concordances help determine the meaning of words through usage, context, the wider framework in which a passage occurs. Diagramming shows the relationship of individual words within sentences. And lexicons provide definitions, root meanings, identifications of some grammatical forms, and a list of passages. That's what I really like about Blue Letter Bible, is it will list all the passages that a word may be in. So those are the tools that... Hayden talks about and that we have at our fingertips very easily today. So those are the tools. So this is going to be a very short video for today because we, we've talked about the tools and the, and the Bibles and so on and so forth. And <clears throat> there will be a day that we will just talk about the text itself and the authority of Scripture. There will be a day. Um, I will go ahead and, and say and share that in my life, in my home, I demonstrate the, the authority of the scripture in my life by placing it high on a shelf. I do not mix my Bibles with other books. This is the Holy Word of God, and it is to be set apart and separate. And so I have a separate shelf just for Bibles. And I do not mix and mingle the Holy Word of God with other words. That is just a way in my life that I demonstrate the authority of Scripture in my home and over my life. That is how I see it and that is how I display the text in my home on shelves and whatnot. The other thing is I don't write in my Bibles. I do not write. I don't write in my Bibles. I know that there's a big, a huge trend now, these um, prayer Bibles. Okay. I get it. I don't write in my Bibles. I, I don't do it. Um, <clears throat> I've had this Bible since, let me see if I wrote on the page when I bought this Jewish Bible. Okay, it does not have a, yes. Okay, so I bought this Bible for myself on October 11th of 2020. And I will write on the presentation page, but I do not write in the text. And I don't keep litter within the Holy Word of God. I don't litter my word with the Holy Word of God. And it's mainly because there is a spiritual mother in my life that me and a friend were going to Sunday school one day and we had all kinds of litter in our Bibles and she, she admonished us. She talked to us about littering the Holy Word of God with basically trash and never cleaning it out. And she she was, she was thoroughly disgusted with our behavior, and we love her, and she let us know 
in a super kind fashion that what we were doing was not reverent, was not reverent. And so since that day, because I hold her, this particular woman, I hold her in great regard in my life. And like, she's 85, 86. She's in her 80s. She's in her mid to late 80s. She still drives a car. She lives out in the country with her husband. And <clears throat> she still is very active in the community. And she still helps to take care of some people at a nursing home. And mid to late 80s, yes. And so when this woman admonished us for littering the word of God and for not holding the holy word of God in reverence, I stopped. I stopped littering my Bibles and I stopped writing in my Bibles and I stopped that day and I haven't picked up that habit since. And I'm very thankful that for this particular spiritual mother because she means a great deal to me. She is also the woman that invited me to Bible study fellowship some almost 12 years ago. So, yes, I have many, many spiritual mothers in my life. And my mother, my personal mother, passed away when I was either 33 or 34. And my daughter was 18 months old. And so I'm now 60. So that tells you how many spiritual mothers the Lord God Almighty has placed in this my one life. And I hold them all in high regard. And I appreciate what each one brought to my life. I also appreciate the fact that had my mother still been alive, I likely would not have listened to those spiritual mothers and the path of my life would likely have been greatly different. So that, that knowledge and that knowing has shaped my life because that's um, a monumental thing to lose a mother. And it's a monumental thing to lose a mother when your daughter is only 18 months old. So my mother never met my son. And he was born, my son was born the same, the year after my mother passed away. So it is amazing what the Lord will use to shape our lives and who the Lord will use to shape our lives. So looking back over the many, many years since my mother passed away, it's not lost on me. It's not lost on me. It is not lost on me how the Lord has moved in my life. So those are our tools for today. The books that we are using in this 31 Days of the Art of Engaging the Word exegetically in an expository fashion, those books have I have listed today on my on the Keyword Bible Studies website. There are two books, 10 books, excuse me, 10 books that are on the site and no, there's absolutely no way we can read 10 books in 31 days. There's absolutely no way. So, looking at this, I have devised a plan. I have devised a plan, and that plan is for every month that there is 31 days, somewhere on YouTube, I will do this 31 days thing, this engaging the word exegetically in expository teaching, sharing book thing. So we have 10 books. And so each month we will glean from those books, each month that has 31 days in it, except for the month of December. We will, we'll, we'll not do it in the month of December, but there are six other months that have 31 days in it. So for those months that have 31 days in it, 
we will continue this process somewhere on YouTube. Now, I'm not sure if it'll be on the Good News Sunday show or if it will be on one of my other channels. In likelihood, it'll be here on the Good News Sunday show. So, for the month of January, we will gather all the materials and we will determine what book we will look at in regards to this subject matter. So at the end of October, we will have the knowledge that we are going to gather again in January and we will look at yet another book. Right now, right now, this book seems to be the front runner in my hands. This book seems to be the one that I have. Yeah, it's the book that I have marked in the most. This other book is also great, but I have not currently marked in it as much as I have in this book. So, we will run with this book first. We will gather all the books between now and the 1st of January. And then in the month of January, we will run with another book and we will do this again. In the months that we do not do, not do this, we will be writing messages. We'll be writing messages. And as we learn, we can rewrite and we can learn more. So we'll take the next six months of 2024. And for each month that has a 31 days in it, we will do this thing that I have titled The Art of Engaging the Word Exegetically in an expository, everyday fashion. So, that is my plan going forward. This is a wealth of material. This is a daunting task. This could easily be called a 101 course. And right now, I have my eye on 10 books. And so, that would take us into 2025 if we did six books a year. So... That is all I have for us. I am surprised as you are, because like I said at the beginning of this, I did not know what I was doing. I did not know what I was getting myself into. But after digging into these books that I already had in my possession, I've had these books since 2022. I've had these books for a while. So that is our plan as of right now. I will formalize that plan a bit more and we will go from there. But for right now, we're going to do some basics for the month of October out of this particular title. So I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited about that going forward. And that is all I have for us today. Tomorrow on day six, we will talk about another subject matter. I'm not sure if it's going to be, I have a list of subject matters of 31 subject matters that I have pulled in. So I'm not exactly sure exactly, exactly the subject matter for tomorrow since we talked about tools today. Yesterday we talked about the task, the daunting task. Today we talked about tools. Tomorrow, and on day three, we talked about, we had an overview of terms. And on day two, we talked about who is teaching. And on day one, we had an introduction. And incidentally, since all of this started, the Gospel Coalition has opened what they have called the Carson Center. And it is a center of expository learning within the Gospel Coalition. I got that message yesterday about 4 or 5 o'clock. And they have launched that and have opened that as of today. So the author, D.A. Carson, who I am very familiar with, I have quoted him in some of my work. This learning center has been named after him him and it was launched yesterday. So 
there is a lot going on within this subject matter in the world. And I think that we've come to a position in time where we realize the church, <clears throat> somehow we have faltered in getting the message of the gospel to the people who need the message of the gospel. So I feel like the church is shoring up our foundation so and the urgency of this matter so we can get this message of the Lord Jesus Christ out there in a more urgent fashion because sin is serious. It is a very, very serious thing. And the job of getting the message out there in regards to sin is also a very serious matter. So this is Sonia McCullough Locker signing out for the Good News Sunday Show, Keyword Bible Studies, and the one and only Jesus.com. Be blessed. Be blessed in the Lord on this very day. Thank you.